Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, and today, and forever. The Church of Jesus Christ presents Pastor and Evangelist Pete Rowe. Praise the Lord. All right, children, I want to greet you and welcome everybody back to the program today. And we thank God for this privilege of getting to be with you. And I hope you've been with us in our last messages. We've been speaking on a time of the dead. And truly, children, there is a time that every person, whether in the seas or buried in a tomb or cremated, don't matter, there will be a time that they will see Jesus one more time and that's going to be the final coming of the Lord. And whoever's name is not in the Lamb's book of life is going to be cast into the second death, which is the lake of fire. But children, you've got multitudes that's teaching you that there's at least two more comings of the Lord and that people's going to get a change all over the world during the millennium. And they don't really know what they're saying because if you study, you're going to find out that the true reign of Christ started on the day of Pentecost and at the same time that Jesus died on the cross that he said now the prince of this world is cast out he put a wound upon the dragon that old serpent or the devil through the kings for a thousand years and took out authority of death from them but that's the wound that's going to get its healing back but I want you to notice some things to prove that you're not going to have time after this life because Jesus is going to give his people a new heaven, a new earth. And as far as the first heaven, first earth, John said, Revelation 21, were passed away and there was no more sea. So children, the end of all things is a coming. And I know the devil don't like it and he teaches that there's no end of the world and all this and that, but that's his problem. But anyway, I want you to notice something. As Paul began to come through the coast of Athens and found certain people that were devoted to an unknown God, and he said, you're ignorantly worshiping that. Why? Because the true God is known now, and of course that's Jesus Christ. If you read 1 John 5, 20, John said, we know the Son of God has come given us an understanding that we may know Him that is true, and we're in Him that is true, even in His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God in eternal life. So we're not talking about somebody unknown. We're talking about a great Savior, well known. But anyway, go with me to the book of Acts right quick, then I'll get into Job. 17th chapter and verse 23. Paul speaking to the men of Athens. He said, I perceive in verse 22 that in all things you're too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, to the unknown God, whom therefore you ignorantly worship him, declare I unto you. Then he said, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worship with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he gives to all life and breath and all things. Now, I want you to notice verse 26. And has made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell upon the face of the earth and has determined the times there before, or let me read it, and the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord if happily they may be, may feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us, but notice this, for in him we live, we move, we have our being as certain of your own points Poets have said, for we're his offspring. Now watch this. For as much then as we're the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art or man's devices. Now look at verse 30. At the times of this ignorance God winked at. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed, he hath appointed a day in the which 
He will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom you've whom he ordained whereof he has given assurance unto all men in that he has raised him from the dead. Now, they begin to mock him over the resurrection. So there is a pointed day that God will judge the world in righteousness and that's when you'll be judged good or bad. So, if you go back to Job, I want to show you what happens after Jesus returns or as Paul said in Hebrews chapter 9, as it's appointed unto men, once to die, but after this, the judgment. Now listen to Job, agree with it. First of all, in the book of Job chapter 14, and verse 1 it said, Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. See, in the world you're going to have tribulation. Well, if you'll notice verse 1 of chapter 7, of Job. He said, Is there not appointed time to man upon the earth? So there was a time to be born, there's a time to die. There's an appointed time, your very hairs of your head are numbered. So that means you can't change God. The way He taught it in this book will never change. He settled it in heaven. So no matter how they try to pull out words, which they're doing, it's not going to work. Get all these commentaries you want to. You need the good old King James Version and leave it at that. Well, anyway, watch what he said here in uh, verse 10 now of the book of Job 14. Man dieth, but man dieth <coughs> and wasteth away. Yea, man giveth up the ghost. That's spirit leaving his body. And where is he? as the waters fell from the sea, and the flood decayeth and dry up. Watch, verse 12. So man lieth down, that's his death, and riseth not, that's the resurrection, till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. See right there, that stops these theories, that the saints will be raised and go through a millennium reign, and then the rest of the world will go through tribulation all this. Honey, there's one more coming. You ain't going to have the time. What did he say again? Man lieth down and riseth not, verse 12, till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake, nor be raised out of sleep till the heavens is no more. Oh, that thou would hide me in the grave, Job said, that thou wouldest keep me secret, until the wrath is past, that thou wouldst support me a set time and remember me. If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time, notice, will I wait till my change come. So there is a change of coming. There's a resurrection. But children, it can't happen till everything's fulfilled and the heavens is no more. Now, will that go right along with old Peter? Why don't you go back here to the book of uh, of First Peter? Turn with me to the book of First Peter again, the third chapter. Let me show you, children. These men knew exactly what they're talking about. And let me tell you something, children. I love you. I love all of God's people. And I'll be first to tell you, I'm not well educated in the world, but I'll tell you this much: I'm not confused. Because God is not the author of confusion. I'm not disturbed when Jesus is coming. Oh Lord, is it before the tribulation? Is he coming during the tribulation? When is he coming? I done got the answer. See, I didn't pull it out there and throw it away. Paul said in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, let no man deceive you by any means. When they get up here and say, see that word falling away? In 2 Thessalonians, there shall come a fallen away. That's a misinterpretation. Throw it out. It should be. There shall come a rapture first. Catching away first. See? They're wrong. Paul said, let no man deceive me. For that day shall not come except there come a fallen away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So see, that's what's a damaging. But what did old Job say? Man riseth not till the heavens be no more. Listen to Peter. Now we zone this a little bit, but let's go over it again. 
third chapter of the book of Second Peter, and notice verse six, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. That was a flood, Noah's day. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, watch, reserved unto far against the day of judgment and what? Perdition of ungodly men. And children, that's a happening now. It's going into perdition. But God will do the final destruction. But go back to Revelation. This was the beginning of my program. Revelation 11 and verse 17. Saying, we give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty. That's Jesus. Which was, which art, washed. Excuse me there. I believe my machine went off on me. Sorry about that. <laughs> First time I had it in my pocket. But anyway, notice this. <laughs> Bible said, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and washed and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come. And the time of the dead, see there, that they should be judged, and that thou should give reward unto thy servants the prophets and to the saints and them that fear thy name small and great and should have destroyed them which destroyed the earth. Now, isn't that what we just read you here out of the book of Peter, third chapter, what he told you? The earth is reserved unto far against the day of judgment, children, and the perdition of ungodly men. Honey, Revelation 9, that smoke that come up out of that pit, which is the earth, them locusts come up on this earth, that's your building age now of atomic weaponry. And Satan's already loose with all of his power. And children, it's not going to be much longer that God's going to have to loosen them four angels that's bound in the great river Euphrates and a lot of destruction. Earth is being destroyed by men, but God does the final work of the destruction. Now remember, I read you there, God's angry, His wrath has come, and He'll destroy them that destroy the earth. But watch what He said here. But the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word kept in store reserved unto far against the day of judgment, perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, <clears throat> that one day is with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack. He's going to do it. Concerning His promises, some men count slackness. The ones that want to pull it out of there. See? They believe everything's going to go on and on. There's no end. I hear that Dr. Van Impe get right on camera. If he can tell it on camera, I can tell what he said. He got right in that camera and said, there's no end of the world. There's no end. Hallelujah, everything's going to go on and on. Boy, will he meet Jesus that said heaven and earth will pass away. Oh, that's a mistranslation. Tell him that. But watch your Bible. Listen to it. <clears throat> but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens will pass away with a great noise. The elements are met with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth, or nevertheless, we according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwells righteousness. Now, you need to know this too, that new heavens and new earth is not. This one, renovated, restored, cleaned up, beautified, like you'd take an old 55 Chevy and make it look like a new one. It isn't going to work with the Lord on that. 
because here she Bible to prove it. Revelation 21, 1. And I saw a new heaven, new earth, for the first heaven and first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Right here is two great men of God, John and Peter. Of course, Paul, all of them wrote about it. Jesus wrote about it. Now, who would you want to believe? These so-called doctors, these educated people that don't want to end to come. They don't want nothing to do with a new earth. They just want this one renovated. They love their belly. And their God is their belly. And children, they don't want to believe this earth a past. Well, I've heard them get right on television. And you've got multitudes of paying for that. But what about meeting God in the judgment over this? John saw a new heaven, a new earth for the First earth and first heaven were passed away, and there was no more sea. Well, what did John say in verse 11 again of Revelation 20? He said, I saw a great white throne, him that sat on it, from whose faith the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. See, their children, it's going to be over. When Jesus returns, we are coming up out of the ground if you're dead or if you're alive. You will be changed. And you'll all go up together, the dead and the living. We'll all be caught up to meet the Lord where? In the air. Now that's the only catching away you can find in the Bible. But children, you're going to have to put God first. And I know this is not well loved by even the Jesus name people. But I'm not going to stand up here for the crowd and tell you. It don't really matter. But why then would the Apostle Paul tell you, don't let no man deceive you? Why did Jesus say to his own little disciples, be not deceived? Let no man deceive you. For many will come in my name, saying I'm Christ, and yet deceive many. What are we going to do with the book of Acts chapter 20 and 28? When Paul told the elders at Ephesus, he said, Take heed to yourselves and all the flock over which the Holy Ghost made you an overseer to feed the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. Come on. He said, For after my departure, grievous wolves would enter in among you not sparing the flock. Why did he say all that? Men of your own selves would arise. That's out of the Jesus name. Speaking perverse things to draw away disciples. You think it ain't happened in the early 40s and 50s when a well-known, supposed to have been a prophet of God, right out of the Jesus name, pulled away people, denying the scripture, and said there would be a catching away before the tribulation. When children, God knows I'm telling you the truth, there's no Bible for that. You can't take Revelation 4 and 1 and say that's a rapture of the church. When verse 2 on down, said, John said, I was in the Spirit and the throne was set in heaven. And immediately there came a voice and said, Come up hither. And I was in the Spirit and a throne was set in heaven. One sat on the throne. That wasn't the church going out of here as they tell you. Neither was Enoch being translated a type of it. But why are they doing it? They need some kind of a doctrine to seduce you with. But didn't Paul say, let no man deceive you? Second Thessalonians 2. For that day shall not come except there's a falling away first and the man of sin be revealed. Don't you know that's all they're teaching anymore? It's a secret rapture. But buddy, you're not going to find it with God. You're not going to find it in your Bible. One more appearing is all there is of the Lord. And that's why I want our people to understand these things. We're running out of time. And you better believe you ain't got much longer till the kingdoms of this world is going to become the kingdoms of our God, but not by taking over the earth, but the saved people out of the nations. Look here at Revelation 21. Turn with me. Let me show you something. Revelation 21, verse 22. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. The city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, 
to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Now go to verse 24. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and their honor into it. That's not the wealth of the world. The gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. What's this? And they sh shall bring, they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defiles, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. So, children, to sum it up. Verse 24 and verse 26, God help us, is not talking about the saints taking over this earth and live eternally here. It's telling you that in Revelation chapter 11, when that seventh angel sounded, if you'll notice it said the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ and he'll reign forever and ever. That's when the gospel began to go into the world. And at the final day, final day of judgment, Paul said, or Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven was like unto a net cast into the sea, gathered of every kind, and they sat down and severed the wicked from the just, the good from the bad. Honey, it's happening now. God's getting his true elect ready for his final return. We need to get this word of God abiding in us. Children, if you don't ever study, then it's easy to be deceived. But you don't have no Bible. Somebody write me and show me. I don't want something you can get out of your imagination in between. There is no Bible teaching you that is going to sneak in here and take the church out before the tribulation. Let me tell you how Satan deceives. He's even got pretty songs there used to be one called, I'll see you in the rapture. And all of these things, it just worked on the mind of people. But then when you study your Bible, there ain't a bit of it true. Jesus is coming. But it's done come the first time. And at his resurrection, he resurrected 144,000 many bodies of the saints out of Matthew 27, fulfilling Isaiah 26, 19. They're at the throne with him right now, so they're not coming back. What's going to happen when Jesus returns a second time? Did I read it? We might ought to read it again to make sure. Go with me. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27 again. Read it with me. And as it's appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered, see, to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. You know what they're teaching now? That that means the last time or the third time. They said the rapture in between there wasn't considered a second or nothing. They'll do anything to get you fooled. But let me tell you, he can't come and that, that not either be the first or second. And if he's already come the first time, well then if, he, if he's going to sneak in here, that'd be a second one. But see, he ain't going to do it that way. His second one, every eye's going to see him. The man that pierced him, all the world. But children, why are they doing all of this? Because we have leaders that are blinded and they're leading the blind and it's a building up to people all these years just don't know how to understand, believe it. But I want you to go with me as I close here to the 15th chapter of the book of Matthew, I believe it is. Let me show you what Jesus said here because it's dangerous for us to play around with people and not know our labors among us. I'm including me or anybody else. I want you to go with me to Matthew 15. You read it all when you get time, but there's asking Jesus, why do your disciples transgress the elders? Because they don't wash their hands before they eat and so forth. But did you ever study what he meant here? In verse about uh, 7, when he's telling them, you honor me with your lips. 
but your heart's far from me. See? Let me show you So Let's just drop back to uh, what he told them here in verse 3. After they jumped on him, of course. And he answered and said unto them, verse 3 of Matthew 15, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your traditions? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and thy mother, and he that curseth father and mother, let him die the death. But you say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. See there? Thus have you made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. What's he saying? You think money and gifts is going to change God? No, sir. You hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you saying, here it is, this people honor draws near me, draws nigh unto me with their mouth. Listen. What did he just say? This people draws nigh unto me with their mouth and honors me with their lips. You know what that means? A lot of talk. But their heart is far from me. How be it, or but in vain, they do worship me, teaching for doctrines and commandments, the commandments of men, teaching them for doctrines. See, children, he even went on after they got offended. Watch this. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand, not that which goes into the mouth defiles a man, but that which comes out of the mouth, that defiles a man. Then came to his disciples and said, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard these sayings? Listen. He, said, uh, he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of who, though? The blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch, not heaven. Now, study it. Well, let's go ahead and finish it. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. So explain what this means. He said, Jesus said, are you also without understanding? Do you not understand that that which enters into the mouth and goes into the belly and is cast out in a drought that you food now? But those things which proceed out of the heart or out of the mouth comes forth from the heart. But those things which proceed out of the mouth comes forth from the heart. And they defile the man. For out of the heart proceeds what? Evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. What are these? These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashing hands defiles not a man. See their children, traditions, doctrines of men has got people to their so confused. They don't know who to believe. It's a truth. We got so many ways out here and so much money flowing in religion. It's hard to understand who's right and who's wrong if you don't go to your Bible and read. Now, let me show you powers. We're closing here. These are things, children, we need to build ourselves up and go after the Word of God. Go with me to the book of Timothy. What he told Timothy in verse 4, uh, verse Two of chapter 4 of 2nd book of Timothy. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come each year when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own love shall they heap to themselves teachers having each and ears, and they'll turn away their ears from the truth and be turned unto fables. Now children right there, it's what the damage in is. If we don't turn to the Word of God, they'll seduce you. So I see my time's up. Be sure to stay with me on our next program. We thank God for everybody tuned in with us. Write us in any prayer requests. If you can help us on our programs, we do really need it and appreciate it. So God bless you as a prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God. We would like to thank you for joining Brother Rowe and invite you to continue with him in outreach. 
Your prayers and support will be deeply appreciated. If God leads you to help in this ministry, please send your contributions to The Church of Jesus Christ, Post Office Box 283, Baxter, Kentucky 40806. And may God bless you.